Welcome to Empowerment Through Mentorship. This is an event hosted by the Alumni Association and the Career Center. We are teammates on SJSU Squared, and this event is being um, taking place as part of the Career Center's uh, first ever Diversity Career Week. So we're so excited you're here. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the team, um, go through the agenda and a few uh, slides about the platform, and then we'll head into our keynote. So first, let me... Uh, introduce my colleagues at the Career Center. Christine and Larissa are the part of the team that work with the students on SJSU Squared. And my name is Braley and I'm from the Alumni Association and I support the alumni mentors on the platform. Here um, is a little bit more detailed agenda for this evening. So right now we're in the welcome and house rules section. Then Christine will take over and do an introduction of SJSU Squared, which is the mentoring platform here on campus. Then we'll have our keynote speaker, uh, Sean Fletcher, and then we'll do breakout networking sessions. So there'll be um, three options for students to choose from, and you'll be able to be in a smaller group setting with one of our alumni mentors. Then we'll all come back to the larger room, do an event close, and have a survey for students to um, be entered to win a gift card. All right, so I've mentioned this a few times, but I'm probably going to mention it a few more times. So if you're a student, Please check in in the chat. Uh, there's a Google form that Christine has put in there. So click that link, uh, check in so that we can see you're here. Uh, the other important reason to check in is because after the event, we'll actually be sharing the recording via email and we'll need you to have checked in and we'll use that list to send the recording out. If you have any questions um, for Sean during the event, you can put them in the chat and our team will be monitoring them and then we'll actually uh, be able to ask those questions on your behalf. Um, during the Q&A portion after the keynote. We ask that you um, stay muted unless otherwise prompted just so everyone can hear the speakers that are being spotlighted. All right, from here, I'm gonna hand it over to my colleague, Christine, and she's gonna talk a little bit about SJSU Squared. Hi everyone, um, thank you for being here. We're so glad that you're here. Um, just wanted to briefly talk about the benefits of mentorship. Um, so these are the three reasons. Um, first is career advancement. Um, you know, uh, according to Strada, a lot of um, people pursue higher education because they want to advance in their career. And um, that when someone receives mentorship or advising um, while they're in their um, pursuing their academic um, degrees, their more increased their increased engagement at work um, is more present. Um, and also, um, having a mentor um, helps build a connection between degree and career. So you're learning from someone who's you know maybe possibly taken the major you've had and is now making a career right out of it or um, doing something related. So it's it's really um, important to learn from people who have gone before us and and learn from their wisdom and experience. So um, what is SJSU Square? So SJSU Square is an online mentoring platform that connects mentees. Um, in this case, students to mentors who are either alumni or other professionals to support mentee career success. So how do students participate in this platform? There are several ways. So the first way and which most students take advantage of is the quick connection. So it's open to students all year round. Um, and it's usually for one time career conversations or informational interviews. So, for example, you might be a psychology major and you're like, I don't know what to do with my career. I want to talk to another psychology major student or grad, um, alumni. This would be an opportunity to be able to do that. And I'll demonstrate shortly on the platform how you can find um, people. Um, the program, uh, the professional mentoring meetups program is a more formalized program and it's only admit by application. Um, it's uh, offered on a semester basis and there is more expectation between um, the mentor and mentee. So the people who participate in this program are those who are uh, a little bit more clear on what they want to do and really need uh, the guidance of a mentor to help them launch their careers. Um, the other ways that students can participate is through groups. Um, most of the groups are by invite only, um, and it's available all year round. And the discussions with the, within the group are um, about careers customized to that particular affinity group. Um, so this is the 
what it looks like, but let me just um, actually show you what it looks like live on the platform. Um, so if you go to 1SJSU, just type um, mentoring, you know, SJSU Square should pop up. If it's your first time, it'll ask you a bunch of questions. Um, and then eventually you'll get to this landing page. So I just want to briefly just show you quick connections. So this is where you can find alumni who can help you, you know, if you're curious about what what someone did, you know, who has a similar major as you, or maybe you're curious about someone who works at Google, or um, you could also search people by their specific um, position title. So once you click on Quick Connections, you land on this page, you see people's um, information here. So if you see the green light, um, they're currently online. So David, who's one of our alumni um, leads for the breakout session, is currently with us in Zoom and is also live on, on the platform, um, as well as Eric, who's here to support us as well. Um, and then here you can see, you know, people, so you could randomly look at it this way or use um, keyword search. So I'm just going to go by psychology because that's the uh, example that I'm just sticking with right now. So you go and type in psychology and it should pop up um, profiles of people who are, um, who have the word psychology in their profile. So um, they may have a psych degree or they might be doing something right now. So if you click on a particular um, profile of a person, you could see um, what they're currently pursuing or have pursued. And if you're interested in connecting with this person, for example, um, you can click on message. And there are templates here. So on the left panel, you can see their information. Um, and then on the top, you can choose a particular um, template to use um, depending on your need. So I know a lot of um, professors assign, you know, informational interviewing um, for our students. So this is a, a great tool for you to take advantage of so you can connect with alumni and learn more about um, what they've done. So even if you select a particular template, you are still free to, you know, um, customize it based on the message that you want to share. So that's quick connections on a quick overview. Uh, let me just go back here to our presentation and um, see where we're at. And so now we're moving on with our keynote um, speaker. I am honored to um, introduce um, Dr. Sean Fletcher. Um, he is also an alum, class of 2003. He's an assistant professor for public relations and sport communication. And he's also um, an administrator for one of the groups on SJSU Square, which is Sankofa. So welcome, um, Sean, and I'll, I'll stop sharing so you can tell the group more about yourself and mentorship. Thank you so much, Christine and, and team. I, I appreciate it. It's, it's fantastic to be here. Of course, I, I know many of you and those that I don't, hopefully I will get a chance to, to meet you, especially when uh, this Zoom world that we tend to live in the last year and a half starts to loosen up a bit. So I, I must uh, warn you, I am a professor by trade. I lecture. I'm not going to do that this evening. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about myself and my journey, uh, mainly as a mentee. You may have thought I was gonna talk as a mentor, but mainly as a mentee and how impactful it has been on my life. And then give you a bit of a, a call to action for yourselves, no matter where you may be as a potential mentee, but also as a potential mentor. So I am going to, as I'm sure the students among us are accustomed to, I am going to share my screen really quickly so you can take a look at a few slides that's going to, to guide us through this presentation. All right. So um, a little bit about myself. I am, uh, as Christine mentioned, I am a professor of public relations and sport communication here at San Jose State University. Um, I'm also an alumni, as she mentioned. Uh, I graduated long, 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 long time ago. I'll add an extra long, long time ago. Uh, back in 2003, I was also a transfer student from a community college down in Southern California, although I am uh, born and raised from St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, so I'm sure many of you all can resonate with the transfer 
story uh, of not being a student who joined as a freshman here on campus. So even from that standpoint, that resonated uh, with me when I met individuals who represented a little bit about my journey. Now, one thing that you will learn about me, if you don't already know, I love the power of quotes. I love what they do, what the, how they speak, how they challenge each of us. And quite honestly, um, this was one that spoke to me as well. And it's apropos for our conversation today. It says, we're here for a reason. I believe a bit of the reason is to throw little torches out to lead people through the dark. And if you're anything like, like me, there were many times throughout my life and career journey that I had, I had no blueprint. Uh, and I'm sure many of you all can relate as well. Not because I didn't have well-meaning individuals in my life, it was simply because they didn't have the experience to give to me. So from a mentorship perspective, uh, there was a bit of a deficit that was there. However, they still played a significant part in my life. But then the most important part from that is when you have no blueprint, what do you do? When you have many well-meaning individuals in your life who did not experience some of the things that you, you aspire, to experience in your life, but also your career, academically, professionally, personally, what do you do? Do you stop? I can remember vividly, and I'm gonna talk about him without getting emotional. My father, I remember him telling me one time, he said, listen, um, I've taken you as far as I can take you. I have a high school degree. You're beyond that. Go forward. I turn you over to them. And he meant that. And he meant that in many respects in terms of now, what are you going to do? How are you going to chart your course? How are you going to chart your pathway? And mentorship helped me significantly because sometimes and oftentimes we need others to, to light our path, to illuminate our path that's otherwise somewhat dark and somewhat hazy in terms of lack of exposure to some of the things that we want. So I'm going to tell you a little bit with the time that, that I have with you, a little bit about my, my journey as primarily being someone who needed mentoring, even though I didn't know it, even though I resisted it a bit, even though sometimes I just needed a quick uh, kick in the pants to let me know that you do have support, you do have individuals who have been where you want to go. And I like to look at my life in, in seasons, and I'm sure many of you all do as well. Each of uh, the, this sort of photo montage, and photos tend to bring words to life. If you're anything like me, you prefer not to just listen to a gaggle of words. Usually you like to, to, to see it. So I, I pulled together a number of different photos that somewhat highlight and represent the seasons of my life that required mentor support and how that ended up being filled. So the top left-hand corner, the, the, the big head one, who's the shorter one on the left-hand side, that is me. Um, no wonder that blue became my favorite color because it was all my parents put me in. I am the youngest of, of five uh, children, all of whom uh, graduated with degrees and um, with no blueprint, as I, as I mentioned to you before. So each of us at some point in our life needed some sort of guidance and illumination. Academically as well was a season in my life where I charted a course that I had no idea. I had no one to show me the way to do it. No one to show me how to prepare myself. And I was a student athlete. And as you can see, I thought I was the, the coolest person on the block. I had that's a different conversation for a different day. My students love to, to laugh at me when I show it. But I was a student athlete. And in all seriousness, that provided a certain set of challenges unique, uniquely their own, to where I had to identify who was I? What was my identity going to be even as a student athlete? And I'll share a little bit about who filled that gap as well, moving into adulthood also trying to navigate that space. Mentorship doesn't just stop in one season of your life. It doesn't just stop professionally. It doesn't just stop academically. It doesn't just stop in adolescence. We continue to grow. And as long as we continue to grow, we need guidance. 
And then of course, professionally as well. I charted a course that even though I was the youngest of five, that no one in my family had, had, had charted. No one in my family had a, a doctorate degree prior to me getting one. Now my sister and my brother, because we're uber competitive, that's what I blame it on, just competition. They ended up going to, to get one as well. But prior to that, when I was going through it, I was lost. I was lost prior to that also. And there were many individuals who helped to fill that void for me. And it was and they were instrumental in my success and where I am today in, in, in pursuing success. I certainly have not arrived, and I'm sure many of you all can, can relate to that. We're still aspiring for success. We're still taking step one step after the other. We're still trying to stack wins day to day on top of one another as we move towards our definitions of success. And for each season, for each season that I just showed you on the previous slide, there was someone who filled that void. There was someone who bridged that gap of understanding, of maturity, of guidance, of resources, of telling me in their own unique way, you're not doing it right, there's a better way of doing it. Of course, in, in, in childhood and then adulthood, my father, Hosea Fletcher, is the greatest man that I know. And I won't go too far into it because I'll get emotional. You don't want to see that. However, my father, he is still, still living. He was the first mentor that I had. And again, understanding that even many around me, they had they had guidance that did not necessarily come in the form of a biological guardian. I'm not saying that's, that's necessary, but the mentorship, the leadership, the guidance that I needed, even at that season in my life was instrumental. And then I moved, I moved into academia and I was fortunate enough to have a number of mentors who saw this ex-student athlete, uh, uh, and when I was here at San Jose State, current student athlete who was leaving practice and going to class and underperforming and getting C's and B minuses. And Bob Rucker, who just recently retired from journalism and mass communication, where I teach now, he was that mentor for me when I was an undergrad here at San Jose State, wearing my baggy sweats and going to class and, and being somebody I wasn't. He was that one who called me into his office one time and he said, I know what you're doing. He said, I know what you're doing. He said, you're falling into this caricature of who you think we think you are as an athlete, as someone who's just here to be eligible to play ball. And at that stage, I had never really had anybody outside of a loved one kind of call me out like that. And I was shocked that he took on that responsibility to do it. And, and it changed it. And it's not hyperbole when I say it changed the course of my life at that phase to where I needed someone to have the courage and the foresight and the, the desire, quite honestly, to say, I see a course that you're taking and we need to alter that. And he did. And he played ultimately a, a instrumental role in bringing me back to San Jose State when I was out in the professional world. I spent uh, over a decade working in corporate America, leading internal communications for various organizations, which I'll talk about uh, a little bit uh, uh, in a moment. But Bob Rucker was someone in that season of my life who played a major part. And as I'm talking, I want you to think about who, who's in an ancillary or direct way playing that part for you. Yet perhaps you haven't established a connection to where they can do even more. But even also, if you're on the mentor side, who's that individual? Who's that student? Who's that person that you see navigating this space that perhaps they just need a little bit of motivation, a little bit of guidance, a little bit of what you got? that could potentially catapult them and be the catalyst like I had to have that aha moment, that paradigm shift that sent me in the direction that led me to where 
I ultimately went. When I left San Jose State, and interesting story because oftentimes as a, as a, a mentor, I learned that transparency is what mentees want. They don't want a caricature of who you think they want. They want the good, bad, and the ugly. So I will. When I graduated from San Jose State, I had a 2.3, and maybe I'm being generous, 2.299 infinity, whatever it is. My transcripts were ugly. I had underachieved, just as Bob Rucker told me. I had underachieved, successfully underachieved. So when I graduated from San Jose State, no one wanted me for graduate school. So the University of Central Florida, long story short, they accepted me on a pro, what's called a provisional basis. And hopefully none of you all ever experienced that. I was not accepted. They would let me go down there on my own dime and a handshake and prove myself. Well, when I got there, I met someone named Rufus Barfield. And he also saw that this young male was coming in who had very little guidance, who had underachieved after he got to know me. And now he's trying to start anew. And one thing that stood out to me about Dr. Barfield was representation. I had never seen anyone in his position who was not just a professor. He had a PhD. He was a researcher. He was a father. He was doing many different things that I looked at and had never really seen all of them compiled in one individual. But the unique part about his mentorship is that he challenged me in a similar way that, that Bob Rucker did. He challenged my identity, which took me to, to the next phase in my social and personal development. He asked me, he challenged me one time in, in his office, and I, I'll never forget this. And I'm sitting there, I'm, I'm, I'm what, 23, 24, something like that, sitting in his office. And I'm trying my best. I'm, I'm getting A's, and I'm focused, and I'm all of that. And he said, that's great. But he said, when are you going to start? When are you going to start being you? I was like, what do you mean? And I'm somewhat getting offended. I'm trying not to get offended. And he said, at, at what point are you going to, at what point are you going to find your voice as a young black male who has thoughts and opinions that don't go with the flow? When are you going to be comfortable going against the grain sometime? And I was shocked. I had never been challenged on that level. And it changed my professional and my academic convictions that even stick with me to this day. He was the impetus for me going and getting my doctorate degree from Howard University, historically black college and university. He went there. That's the type of influence that a mentor, a, a good mentor can have. He had that much of an influence on me that I said, let me go see what that's all about. Cause it sure did something for you. And then the last mentor that, that, that I, I call out, when I moved into the corporate space, as I mentioned to you, I worked for about a, about a decade for a number of organizations. I worked for the Washington football team, and we can talk about that another day. If you send me an email, that's a, that's a treacherous story. However, I also worked for Audi of America. Then I led internal communications for Volkswagen Group of America that is headquartered out of Washington, DC. So after I finished up my doctorate degree, I worked in the professional corporate world. I didn't move to academia until 2014, when I came, or 2018, I should say, when I came here. So I'm in the corporate world and I know no one like me who's doing this job. And former GM, uh, uh, a former chief communication officer for General Motors, Tony Cervone, ended up being my boss. And he knew I didn't know what I was doing. He knew it. He knew it. And he took me under his wing. And he showed me some things. And he challenged me as well to find my professional voice. He kept saying, why are you, and he used a bunch of colorful language, but he, he would always tell me like, why are you messing around with that? Fill in the, the blank for messing around. But he said, why are you messing around with that? Why don't you just cut to the chase? What do you mean when you write this? What do you mean when you said that? 
when you were in that meeting with the president of our organization who makes several zeros more than you on his paycheck, why are you now telling me something you should have said in that, in that meeting? Blew my mind. But at that stage in my professional development, I needed someone who had been there. And one other, one other uh, caveat from that experience that I had, it also told me that mentorship didn't look how I thought it looked. I thought it all had to look like the previous mentors that I just told you about. It didn't. Good mentoring knows no shape, form, color, gender, social identity. It took someone who cared, who gave enough to give of themselves to where now they saw someone who was at a, def a deficit and they were going to be the one to pour in to me. So that experience gave me an a exponential growth opportunity that otherwise I'm absolutely certain that I would not have had. But let's talk about some of the, the, the benefits of being a mentor and a mentee. And most importantly, a mentee, because I understand that, that most on, who, who are listening and who will listen to this playback, you will most likely find yourself right now in the mentee role. But at some point, if you do it right, you'll be a mentor as well. So let's talk about it, because there is absolutely no substitute for the power of human connection. There's no substitute for letting someone and humbling yourself enough to let someone lead you. The, some of the benefits of being a mentee, and there are a number of different sources that will talk about the benefits of it, Harvard Business Review, uh, 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 ASHA, and many of the other organizations will talk about it, but access to a support system, not just when you're graduated, but here as well. The, the mentoring that I do is not just, and I pride myself, and I tell my students this as well, that if the guidance that I give, give you only help you here on our campus or on a college campus, I've done you a disservice because you're not going to end your career here. You're just starting it. You're going to have to take this elsewhere. So you get access to a support system if done well. Also, identifying goals and establishing a sense of direction. As I mentioned to you, my mentors helped me get to gain clarity. What, is, what do you want to do? You can't just be a jack of all trades. At some point, have the conviction to decide, to move. They helped me gain a sense of direction. And then in various seasons of my life, as I, as I shared with you before, they significantly helped me hone in some of uh, who I knew I could be. They helped get, guide me there. And I'm not gonna go through each of these. Hopefully take a screenshot of it, feel free, take a screenshot of, of, of any of the information on here and sit with it on your own and meditate on it and make it personal to you. All right. Also, understanding and learning from the experiences of others. One of the, the axioms that I live by is that if I could learn from your mistakes, I'm not going to make them myself. I will. I don't have to make them myself to learn. If word to the wise, if you take nothing else from this, from this, this talk that we're having. Mentors, be transparent. Mentees, take a lesson. Listen to the pitfalls, the tragedies, the triumphs, the failures, the successes. Professionally, academically, if you reach a certain mentoring and mentee level, even personally, that's where the mentors that I've had in my life had such a significant impact because we were able to cross the threshold to where they could share some personal mishaps. Overworking, poor work-life balance. Hey, Sean, Doc, don't do this, don't do that. It's up to me to take it to heart and do something with it, but ultimately they gave of themselves, all right? But also social capital as well, and I'll, I'll, I'll take it to a professional level also you gain direct access if you are able to forge a relationship with a mentor who is 
doing many things in the spaces that you want to operate in eventually, and you make a lasting impression, you now have access through degrees of separation, their network. I know my mentees do, those who do their part. To where I feel comfortable referring them, I've referred several this summer even alone. That's also part of the mentor role, but also the benefit of being a mentee who does their part to make themselves ready for plugging into a network that you've given access to. And oftentimes that's a lasting network and many industries are very small. I'm sure you've heard that before as well. And again, I do know that not everyone is a mentee on here. Hopefully some of our alumni on here as well. The benefits of being a mentor as I, I land this plane of my talk, there's no better gratification than giving back, than paying it forward. The sense of fulfillment. And while there are some codified professional uh, benefits, enhancement of your resume or your, or your CV, there is no substitute for the benefit that you gain from pulling someone up the same way someone pulled you up at some point. But then, of course, there's, a, there's other benefits of being a mentor as well. The chance to be exposed to a diversity of thought. The mentees that I've had, they all, each and every one of them, added something new to my psyche, to my repertoire of thought and skills, even. But also my professionals who are out there, it's a good way to be tapped in and have your finger on the pulse of the next generation of talent that's out there. And I know there are some, some seniors or rising seniors on this line who really want you to know that. That if you invest in me, I'm gonna pay it. I'm gonna pay dividends. Having, a access, having access to the talent pool is also a benefit. And I'll, I'll leave you with this. I have a challenge, a call to action for each of you, both, both potential mentors and mentees alike. Mentors, pay it forward. I've done that. And a lot of it is, uh, is on the strength of what people did for me. I was compelled to do it, to give of myself, give of my abilities. Understand someone needs your knowledge, experience, and skills, many of which you take for granted. I take for granted. Somebody out there needs it, all right? Somebody out there needs the skill set that you have, that you're putting into action every single day, do not take for granted. Trust me, I am with potential mentees and students every single day. That for many of the reasons that I shared about my own journey, that I had no representation. I had no one to give me a blueprint. Ultimately, I needed someone to give of themselves and their experiences to give me that opportunity. And a, a quote that resonates with me for my mentors. Oftentimes we look for the immediate gratification, but don't judge each day by the harvest you reap, but by the seeds you plant. You will see the fruits of your labor down the road. I talk with Bob Rucker to this day, and he's even retired. And oftentimes he will share how proud he is of me and how he remembers me being that uh, guy who thought he was too cool for school back in the day. But now I became his colleague. His office was right next to mine. The same office that I used to go into with my hat on backwards and my St. Louis jersey that was 10 times too big because that was cool back then. He saw the fruits of his labor years down the line. And my mentees, we used to have a saying at Apple when I worked there. I worked in retail learning and development. We used to say, own your own development. Don't wait to be found. Go find what you need because someone has it. Someone has that skill set you need. Someone has that empathy to be able to sit and, and, and share with you what they see not to tell you what to do, but to coach you through it. Someone has that skill set. Don't wait to be found. Oftentimes, you need to go find who's going to help aid in your development. 
And the 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 final uh, quote that that really stuck with me, and you will know this this name, Steven Spielberg. The delicate balance of mentoring someone is not creating them in your own image, as I alluded to. We don't need many mentors, but giving them the opportunity to create themselves. The best mentor, mentee, and mentee mentor relationships that I have had is where someone created scaffolding for me and let me build the floors to become who I wanted to be and who I needed to be. And the way that I pay it forward, and I saw in the chat someone asked a bit as I as I multitask, I asked a bit, or someone asked, what is paying it forward? Paying it forward. In, 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 in sort of oversimplified terms, is when someone has poured into you, when someone has reached back from their journey, from their experiences, they've mentored you, you pay it forward to the next group who was just like you, who, who are just like me. I see so many students who are walking around campus, who are in my classes, who model the same behavior that I did. That's why I just laugh and I, I cannot pretend that I'm somebody I'm not. I let them know I was just like you. I did the same things you did. In many respects, in the same places, because I went to the school, so you can't fool me, even though I'm much older and grayer, you can't. So for me, paying it forward became an action item. It's not just talk, it's an action item. It allowed for me to get involved in athletics. It involved for me, uh, or it allowed me to get involved in mentoring and meetups. It allowed for me to give very transparent talks on campus and off campus to where I can share some of my experience, even though it's not in a formal mentor relationship all the time. You can mentor and give guidance, even though you don't have a one-on-one -on -one relationship. It's about making the effort and having the mindset and the heart to give and pay it forward, so to speak. And one of the ways that I did that, as Christine mentioned, is myself along with uh, Emerald Green, who is the program director at the Black Leadership and Opportunity Center, as well as Jamal Williams, who is the director of advocacy for racial justice here at San Jose, San Jose State and formerly uh, uh, in Emerald's role uh, we launched a program last uh, year and we piloted it in the spring of 21 uh, called the, Sen the Sankofa Black Spartan Professional Mentorship Program. We, we saw a void. We saw a void that many of us even experienced. Myself, I experienced when I was on campus. And this is just a, a bit of a, a promotion of this plan that we launched, that we're now about to move into a full launch since the pilot is over and we've gotten some lessons learned. And this is a little bit about the program. I'm not gonna share all of the details of it, but if you find yourself interested in supporting it, being a mentor and being a mentee, reach out. We're launching the, the application. We launched it actually this morning and we're going to start to bring in the fall cohort of mentors and mentees. We also have an informational session that you can reach out to either myself or Emerald Green. You can take a screenshot and uh, I'm sure the team here will, will send some information uh, as a takeaway after. But we have an informational session that we're going to have uh, next week on the 13th at 4 p.m. It's going to be uh, at the block uh, that is uh, in the, the uh, student union on campus and we're also gonna simulcast. So we're gonna try and have sort of an in-person and a virtual session as well. But if you wanna know more about it, feel free to reach out to either myself or Emerald. And perhaps this isn't right for you. Find what's right for you, okay? This is just how myself and Emerald and Jamal are paying it forward based upon the experiences that we've had and the voids that we have seen. Because as my final quote that I'll leave you with, mentoring works best when it focuses on the entire person versus focusing on the skill development alone. I can give you the skills. I can try to transfer the knowledge that I've gained over the course of my academic and decades of professional experience 
But if I don't take a step back and take a look at the entire you and what's necessary to move you to the next step of where you want to go, I've missed the mark as a mentor. So with that being said, I appreciate your time. I appreciate your interest. Even being here says something about you and about what you're trying to do. So I will ask you again, remember that call to action. Potential mentors. Identify those that you may be able to give of yourself to and take them to that next plateau of where they want to be. They may not even know where that is. Perhaps you can help them. Mentees, identify, self-reflection, know a little bit about the paths that you want to take and if you have a blueprint. And if you don't, don't try to chart the course on your own. Let somebody help you. And of course, I am here to do just that. Uh, this is my contact information. If you have any questions, feel free, reach out to me, uh, take a screenshot. You all can look me up. Uh, on sjsu.edu if you choose to. I appreciate you all, and I look forward to hearing some fantastic stories of mentorship. So, Christine, I will turn it back over to you. Uh, thank you so much, Sean. Um, mm -hmm. Clarissa is here and will be helping out with um, Q&A. So for um, our participants, um, Please give um, Sean a virtual round of applause <laughs> for his wonderful and amazing talk. I, I really learned a, a lot and I appreciate you, Sean, for sharing your story, especially about your dad. That was very, um, uh, it, it touched my heart to hear you say uh, and talk about your dad. Um, anyway, I, I wanna um, have um, Larissa take over um, for the Q&A portion for, for our students. Please type in any questions that you might have for Sean in the chat box. So let me just share um, screen here again. And Larissa. Awesome. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Christine, for passing over the mic. Uh, thank you, Sean, for sharing such a beautiful story of transitions and all the support that you received along the way. Hopefully it's inspired some students in the room today to start their own mentorship journey, or if they're already on it, to keep it going. So uh, for those of you who want to ask Sean some questions, we have some time for Q&A. So definitely throw your questions in the chat. If you feel comfortable, you can also under the reactions, there's a button to raise your hand. Um, and if you do that, I can put you in a queue and then we can actually have you unmute, turn on your camera if you're comfortable and actually you can ask your question directly to Sean. All right, so I do see some questions coming in through the chat. So let's go ahead and start with those. So let's see. First one I see is from Ha, which is what made you want to transition from, you know, working in corporate to education? For, for me, honestly, um, teaching is, is sort of in my DNA. Uh, I come from a long line of, of informal educators and, and ministers and deacons and those who were largely in a, a developmental type of role. And it wasn't, it wasn't formal. It wasn't formal from the standpoint of it wasn't professional. It wasn't academic driven. Oftentimes it was communal. It was community. And oftentimes that becomes... Uh, just a little bit of a catalyst for and a preview of where you may go next. And for me, I didn't know that until later on in life that I had the teaching bug. But I started, I, I first uh, taught at Howard University. I had a teaching associateship there. And at Howard University, if you don't know uh, about many of our, our historically Black colleges and universities, they are significantly under-resourced. So they threw us into action. I have my own class with students who are my age, for the most part, and I'm their professor as I'm working on my degree. That was a calamity, to say the, to the, to say the least, but it showed me the value of education. It showed me the value of of teaching and development, and most importantly, or equally as important, when it's not there and when it's deficient. And I saw many of them uh, not come back because they didn't have the very things that we talked about today. And Larissa, I think there was one question that snuck in from Erica Gomez that I saw. I opened it up while I was talking, but I didn't get a chance. 
to get to it. Do you see it? Yeah. So Erica's question was, would you say that growth and development plays a big part in education? Uh, 100%. 100%. Um, that is what educate is part and parcel to education is growth and development. If you're not growing and you're in an educational setting, you're in the wrong setting. You're in the wrong class. If you're not growing, you're in the wrong major. I've had those, um, those heart to heart conversations with some students of mine when they realized that they had no direction for what they were going to do with what they had spent so much time with. Uh, growth and development is the goal. That is, that is what happens during and at the end of, of sound leadership, sound guidance, sound mentorship. So absolutely, it's, it's at the heart. Definitely. And I can definitely see that it's a lifetime journey too, even from your own story, right? There's mm -hmm. many different kind of you know markers that you've kind of encountered throughout your journey and different people that supported you through those phases. Mm -hmm. So we have another question, which is like, how do you chart those landmarks of your growth as a mentee? And, and I'm, I'm going to and, and feel free to, to clarify if I if I misinterpret it. But when I when I say own your own development, a lot of that is kind of doing a bit of self assessment. And, and I even had to do that in a rudimentary way to give someone something to work with. And that gives you, that gives you somewhat of your, your cornerstones of, that turn into charting your course. So for me, I knew that I was a student athlete. That was what I, that I, that's ultimately what got me to San Jose State as a scholarship student athlete. So that was a milestone of mine, academia was going to be that. So just paralleling how I charted my course to, to, to answer your question in that way, and feel free to, to, to chat or unmute if I'm not answering it the way that you meant it. But I knew that I had some personal goals that needed to be massaged a bit. I knew I wanted to be, I knew I wanted to get a degree because my parents instilled that in all of us, that you're at least going to get not just a diploma, but a bachelor's degree, even if you have to get it from a local university back in St. Louis, you're going to do that. And then once I moved and I snowballed some of my milestones as well. Don't think I knew it all when I was young. I didn't. So from there, I said, you know what? OK, I'm done playing sport. So I'm going to get a master's degree. That became bing milestone for me. I needed support there. Then I knew from a personal standpoint, I want to have a family. I want to do this. Boom, that became a milestone for me. I knew I wanted to, to go and and that, that's the, the age old uh, hang up that many academics have is that all you can do is teach it. You can't do it. You never did it. You could just teach it, teach about it. And that's true for some because that was their journey. But for me, because I'm in a, a pragmatic field, I wanted to go do it. All right. So I knew I wanted to go and do something before I went back to teaching. That became a milestone for me. I had no idea what I was doing. And folks like Tony Savone and Scott Vazen, who now runs Communication for Lexus, he taught me. They taught me all that stuff. And then I kept snowballing things that I didn't. And one of the things that, that, that I didn't mention that mentors help you do, and we used to say this a lot in the corporate world, they help you see around corners. I couldn't see around the corners. I was just moving. I was just moving. And they helped me see what was around the corner. So my mentors in previous stages of life helped me see what could be around that next corner. And I just kept driving. I just kept moving. So ultimately, to answer that question, I snowballed many of my milestones. And then I assessed them for what they were at that time. And then I aligned myself with people who were doing things that I aspired to do, who had a heart for guidance that I cannot, I cannot substitute that. They had a heart for guidance. A lot of people were doing what I wanted to do who did not have a heart for guidance and mentoring. Definitely. And I think we can have time for one last question. And so Omar has in the chat, can someone be a mentor and a mentee in parallel? I think you discussed a little bit about this in your own journey, but if you don't mind kind of sharing a little bit more in that space. 
Yeah, we we if we're if we're doing life right, uh, we're not monolithic. We're not just singular in who we are. We we can be different things at the same time. Two things can exist at the same time. So yes, you can, and and hopefully you glean that from even my storytelling that that I that I, I gave, and hopefully you can glean that from your own lives. It, it's I'm sure at some point there has been someone who's either younger than you, which is normal, or someone who looks up to you, whether you know they do or not, who's watching you. They're following your lead. Whether you accept the the mentor role or not, you're giving them guidance. And oftentimes you give it to them willingly, you just don't view yourself as a mentor. And then of course, as a mentee, yes, hopefully you are looking for formal, not just informal, but formal, guidance as well to where you allow someone to plug into you and do it in an earnest way not as a tangential marginal i see you every now and again or i only see you in class and you're always in my office hours well you you may as well just make it official and just ask them to guide you to give you mentorship all right and whether it's through the the platform or not and i know that we're, we're pushing you to this formal platform but again understand that none of my mentor relationships had a platform it would have been helpful. However, understand that what you need to get out of it is the most important part about it. So in my opinion, I think that there is always a need at the same time because I have mentors and I have mentees. I don't think at any point when you move, progress in life. Now, again, students, I do not expect that you're gonna have a, a bunch of mentees, no. However, as you start to move forward and accumulating experiences and things that ultimately those who are coming behind you can benefit from, that's when paying it forward will start to, to resonate more and be more relevant to you. And of course, yes, you should wear both hats at that particular time as a mentee and a mentor, because there's always someone who needs guidance and you will always need guidance yourself. Hopefully that answers your question. Yeah, hopefully, Omar, that answers your question. I think it kind of summarizes the picture of mentorship really nicely, that it's a reciprocal relationship, right? You're always going to be helping your mentor, and they're going to be supporting you in ways uh, so that, you know, as a student, I'm sure you've had some mentees, Sean, that have taught you some things, as well as you provided some guidance to them. So you can definitely wear both hats throughout your, your lifetime and your journey. So let's give another uh, virtual round of applause to Sean for being here and sharing his awesome story with us all. Thank you. It was my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.